Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Maria and this is NASA Now for January 25th, 2012. In order to survive in space, we all need air and water. So how can the astronauts on board the ISS maintain a constant supply 24-7, 365 days a year? Our guest today will tell us about her unique role in monitoring the life support and cooling systems on the International Space Station. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA Now. In December of last year, crew members of Expedition 3031 successfully docked with the International Space Station. The crew members are NASA astronaut Don Pettit, Russian cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko, and European Space Agency astronaut Andrei Kuipers. The crew will be busy with dozens of experiments during their time aboard the station. They will be examining what kinds of materials are suitable for the harsh environment of space. How can we build those materials and what can microgravity teach us about manufacturing processes here on Earth? When you're orbiting the Earth in the vacuum of space, it's not that easy to find a steady supply of oxygen and water. That's why NASA has developed special systems to manufacture them on board the ISS. Today, we are joined by Tess Caswell from Johnson Space Center. Tess operates the life support systems aboard the International Space Station. Hi Tess, I've heard two different acronyms associated with life support on the ISS, ETHOS and ECLIS. Could you tell us what they stand for and what they do? Well, ECLIS is one of the more traditional ISS flight controller positions in mission control, and it stands for Environmental Control and Life Support System. This was recently combined with the thermal system to make ethos, so we're now environmental and thermal operating systems. The ECLIS officer is responsible for the life support system on the space station, so all of the equipment that provides air, um, provides water to the crew, keeps it a nice temperature on board the space station, um, but as far as air temperature, while the thermal officer is responsible for the water cooling system that actually maintains the temperature of things like the equipment and computers on board ISS, rather than just the crew. Do you need to deliver oxygen to the space station? It's very expensive to launch oxygen to the space station. Every time you launch a vehicle into space, it costs millions of dollars. So if we can make it on the space station, it's a lot cheaper and a lot easier. There's a lot of chemistry involved in producing oxygen on ISS. We have to take water and break it apart into the atoms that it's composed of. We use the oxygen to put into the air so the crew can breathe it. And the hydrogen can either be vented overboard or we can send it to the Sabatier reactor, which combines it with the CO2 that the astronauts have breathed out to create more water, which can then go back into the loop. So the ethos operators run the oxygen generator to create that oxygen so that the astronauts can breathe while they're running science experiments that improve life on Earth. So what about water? How do you keep a steady supply? All of the water on ISS can be recycled. We have a system that can recycle condensation into drinking water, and we can also recycle urine into drinking water. That's amazing, just like our water purification systems here on Earth, but much more efficient. To change the subject, you mentioned that part of your job is thermal control or temperature. Why is that so important? The thermal system is crucial to the ISS because it keeps all of the computers, all of the hardware on board the space station at a nice cool temperature so they don't overheat and break. It does seem sort of counterintuitive that we would need a system to get rid of heat when space is really, really cold. But the ISS is kind of like an insulated tin can with a bunch of computers running inside it. Even if it's cold on the outside, all those things producing heat on the inside make it really warm inside the can. So we need a system that takes that heat and moves it outside of the space station so that it can go to space where it's really cold. As our experts shared, water is critical to sustaining life in space. Here's a design challenge where you can create your own water filtration system. Teachers, your students can immerse themselves in a real-world science experiment. Check out Engineering Design Challenge Water Filtration 
which can be found on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Look for us on Facebook and leave a comment about today's show. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.